How do you deal with expectations? Like, how? Essentially, there are two main kinds of expectations. An internal expectation like, hmm, Brandon, you should make the bed. And external expectations like, I should be on work on time, otherwise, like, Steve is, is gonna be mad at me. Ah, crap, I'm late. Ugh. So, when it comes to expectations, people fall into, generally, one of four categories. First kind is the obliger. The obliger is someone that can deal with external expectations, meaning someone tells them to do something and they will generally follow through, but struggles to meet inner expectations, meaning like they should do something for themselves. So start on the questions and get them done. Steve has given me an assignment to do. An obliger would happily do that task. I'm gonna do it, but later. All right, so then the opposite to that, well, that's the questioner. The, the questioner questions all expectations. So if you tell them to do something, they're always going to ask why. For instance, let's say you tell a questioner, you need to put on the seatbelt and they ask why, and you say, because it's the law. That wouldn't work on a questioner. An obliger, it's the law, you should put on a seatbelt. They'll be like, all right, all right, we're gonna put it on. A questioner, you'd have to say, oh, the reason you need to put on a seatbelt is because in case you get into an accident, it doesn't kill you. And they're like, oh, right. Then there are the upholders. Upholders, they're generally, they're pretty good with expectations. They can do things they set their mind to and they can do the things they're told to do. They're usually the people that have a really hard time breaking rules. Not too fun at parties, but very, very reliable, dependable people. And then there are the rebels. They deny all expectations, meaning if someone tells them to do something, they're not going to be happy. And if they have to force themselves to do something, they're also going to be happy. Rebels take pride in doing one thing, defying expectations. If somebody tells them to clean their apartment, they're not gonna clean their apartment. If somebody tells them to upload the Jason Liu speed combo tutorial, they don't feel like doing it. Rebels, they're the worst. You can't rely on them to do anything. They're useless, they're undependable, and yeah, you, you guys all know which one of the four I fall into, right? I'm a, I'm a rebel. Now, the reason I really like this framework is it gives you an insight as to what, what drives other people. Like, I'm a guy that loves to put people into boxes, and generally with this, framework, people fall into one of the four. Now, I didn't make this framework up. This was a framework that I read about from Gretchen Rubin, who's like this book on a lot of self help -y kind of stuff. I think she's also a psychologist of some sort, but every single person in my friends group, I make them take this quiz because I want to see how they react to expectations. Steve, the guy I work for, He's a rebel, meaning he hates being told what to do. That's why he owns his own company. Then there are some of my friends, like Nick, for instance. He's a questioner. Every time I have to get him to do something, I have to give him a good reason as to why it's why to do it. Like, and like when he doesn't see the benefit in something, like selling yo-yos on the internet, he stops doing it. And then there are other people inside my friends group, like Stefan, for instance, who are obligers, who respond very, very readily to external expectations. And then there are the upholders. I don't have very many friends, if any, that are upholders, but upholders and rebels, they're the polar opposites of each other. So generally, upholders and rebels, they, they, they don't really get along. Brandon, why the heck are you talking about this? This has nothing to do with yo-yoing. And yeah, it does, and I'm a rebel, so I'm, I'm, I'm contradicting what I'm supposed to be posting about. But I find that knowing what tendency I am gives me an ability to motivate myself more accurately. Let's say you're an obliger, and you can only react to external expectations. Well, you want to put yourself into an environment, like a job, where you're constantly told what to do, and you have a very clear road work ahead, and that way all you need to do is comply to the external expectations, and then you're gonna thrive in that environment. The questioner, all they need to do is have a good reason inside their mind to do it. Like, I need to eat healthy because I wanna become extra fit. That would be enough for the questioner. They're able to comply with their internal expectations. If they think it's a good idea, they'll follow that expectation. Upholders, they're best in environments where it requires discipline and there's also structure. To be honest, I don't know a whole lot about upholders because I'm opposite to the upholder and I don't have many upholder friends. And then there are the rebels. How the heck do you motivate a rebel? 
Tell a rebel what to do and they will hate you for it. They might do it. I wear a seatbelt, I wear a mask, but I don't like it. I don't like following in line, I don't like following the rules. But here's the issue, I don't like following the outside rules and I also don't like following the inside rules. Meaning, if I say, mm, okay, Brandon, you need to clean the apartment today, it's difficult for me to force myself to do that. So the way I'm able to do anything is like, okay, take the Iron Man for instance. When I did the Iron Man, there were a bunch of people who were like, Brandon, you can't do the Iron Man with as little training as you've done. It's just not possible. You can't do the Iron Man. And I intellectualize that. And I think about that and I'm like, oh man. And then not only do I complete the Iron Man, I make a vlog about it and I post it all over the internet. Ha ha ha! That would be the ultimate act of defiance. That is how I got myself to complete the Iron Man. If, if I thought about it the other way and being like, Brandon, there's people counting on you to finish this Iron Man. There is, there is people who've got their hope invested in you to finish this Iron Man. I probably would have tapped out somewhere halfway through the bike ride because it's just not, it, it, it's just, it doesn't motivate me. So something that's been helping me with motivation lately is really trying to frame things not as a obligation or a duty, but framing things as a challenge. This isn't a 30 day upload obligation. This is a 30 day upload challenge. Now I think a lot of misery comes in when you when you're one of the tendencies and someone tries to make you comply with an expectation by thinking you're something else. Like let's say you're a questioner. And all you need is a good reason to do something. But maybe an obliger is, is telling you why you should do something. So they're like, listen, you need to put on your seatbelt because that's the law. You need to wear a mask because that's the law. You need to upload 30 days in a row because that's what you said you would do and people have to follow what they said they will do. That's not gonna freaking work. You need to give them a solid, solid reason. Same with an obliger. You know, obligers, they generally have this one line where it's like, oh my God, I find it so hard to make time for myself. I'm always giving so freely to everyone else and I never have time for me. I don't have freaking issues with that. Like a questioner would be like, bruh, do you know how important self care is? It's important because this, 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 and this. Like an obliger, they're gonna try to people please other people and they're gonna, they, they burn themselves out. So no amount of intellectualizing being like, it's, it's important to take care of yourself, it, it doesn't work. I don't know why I'm so passionate about this topic, but here's the question I've been waiting to ask this entire video. Voo crew, I wanna know which one you guys are. Now again, obliger, rebel, questioner, upholder, all four of them. None is better than the other. They're all different. They can all coexist. But once you understand what you are and what you understand what everyone else is, it, it begins to make dealing with people a lot easier. If you guys could tell me what you are, upholder, questioner, obliger, comment that down below. I will try to tailor my comments to you accordingly. Bye guys.